VCRs. They're everywhere. They are breaking on a regular basis. When your VCR stops working, take the cover off of it. See how the inside works. There we go. Here's another one. Have a screw right here. We have a screw right here. And we have the gut of the VCR. These, you have to take a little bit of time to understand some of the history of tape. When tape first came out, it actually was a steel uh, rod or just a piece of iron, and they were actually recording on iron. Probably one of the more interesting things I saw is someone took an electric magnet and set it next to a bandsaw and then took the, the electric magnet and hooked it up to an amplifier and then spoke into the amplifier and then used the, the uh, speaker side of the amplifier to run through the electric magnet. And they actually recorded their um, signal on the bandsaw blade. So they could then turn off the amplifier and then hook the electric magnet up to the uh, microphone input. And they were actually able to play their voice back off of the bandsaw blade. It was a fascinating thing to watch someone do. But the original tape recorders and some of the original black boxes, which I guess are actually orange in airplanes, are actually recorded on wire. I mean, physical, like, uh, bailing wire type wire. And they have quite a few different signals on it. Well, there wasn't enough room to get that all packed in there, so we ended up having to try to figure out different ways to record things. And we went out and we got the cassette tape. Uh, and then we went and uh, the little standard uh, half-inch wide reel-to-reel -reel tape was some of the very first ones. And they kept moving on and moving on in different ways to record. And the big breakthrough in, in, in actually being able to make cassette tapes, even the little mini DVD tapes, become a real thing, was the slanted head. The fact that this head right here is placed in at a very slight angle. It allows the tape, you have a long run of tape, it actually records the information at a slight angle across the tape allowing a half inch wide tape to appear to the VCR to be maybe three or four inches wide. And it allows you to get one pass of the signal uh, onto a complete cassette tape. All right, got a chance here to plug this in. Now, at this point, remember, this tool has its case off of it. You've plugged it in. You can get hurt. Don't touch electrical parts. But you get a chance to take a look at how this works. And right here, we've actually got the cassette tape. And we're going to take the time. We're going to plug it in and watch what happens here. The tape deck. Ooh, it's not going to work. No, you rat. Someone must have busted this thing really good. One more time. Let's see if we can make it work. It goes back. It should. It's really broken. Ha, there it goes. What happened here is the tape has now been pulled out of this deck, has been by these little arms right back here, is now going out and around this diagonal head, coming back through the, another arm, going over here through a pinch roller. The pinch roller right here is actually what's controlling the speed of the tape, and then it drops back into the cassette. There are drag motors pulling in both directions on this. this like I said, the pinch roller is what's actually controlling the speed, but this head right here, it's got a long, long pass all the way around the tape. So from here to here, it's actually in contact with the tape. So you have a much wider looking tape. And because this head is in at a very slight angle, it actually is recording over well, quite a long piece of tape. So that's how a VCR works. Let's see if we actually get this thing to eject here. Oh, uh, where is it? Come on, do it for me. Watch these rollers back here. Come on, there they go. Oh, it worked. It worked. Ooh, it even put it back. Yay! It wasn't doing that earlier. <laughs> it's cured! <laughs> Watch again. We have the drag rollers right here. Let's turn it around this so you can get a little better view of it. We have the drag rollers right here, which are applying tension to the tape. And then you have these arms right here, which are going to reach into the cassette deck, and they're going to pull the tape out and lay it around this head. Okay, watch again. Here we go. Do it. There it goes. Look at that. All right. This head is actually spinning. I don't know if there's any way I can show that to you. This top one is actually spinning, and it has the actual recording heads in it, and the, the signal is being transmitted down 
to this head and actually put on or read off of that unit right there. So, I mean, it's just an unbelievable amount of little things going on in here to get this puck to work. Where is the eject button? There it is. Let's see if it'll go back out. There it goes. Look at that. One more time. One more time. And then we hit the eject button. Come on out. There we go. Cool. All right. Remember? Plugged in. All right. Unplugged now. Let's take it apart and see how it works. There's all kinds of little cool pieces in here. I need probably a finer screwdriver than that. This piece right here, there is some of the recording heads. Ooh, that's the motor. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, wow, the motor. Usually that's not on top. That's usually on bottom. Nifty. So here we got the actual motor, which is controlling the speed. We got probably electric mag magnets in here. Yep, there's magnets right there. And then you've got your, your electric magnets here, and it gets the motor spinning. All right, how else is it? Ooh, parts. Ooh, springs. Ah, neat stuff. And I'm not seeing this being a piece that's going to bring anything off. I'd like to get into the head of this puppy today. But I think all I'm going to do... Where is it? Oh, there's a bearing there. Oh, ooh, cool. There it is. What else do we have? What else do we have? We need an Allen wrench. I've got Allen wrenches. I've got Allen wrenches everywhere. Let's see if we've got the right size Allen wrench. Do, 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 do. 